Hi there, my name is Harry. I'm just going to do a quick recording of our on DMARC product demonstration, but also have a quick look at the DMARC protocol and what it does for our customers and why it's so important. So first off, I'm just going to share my screen, run through a couple of key slides that I've picked out, which should take no more than five minutes to go through, which gives you a bit of background as to what we do at Redsif. So. First of all, we're going to look at DMARC and this stat here is a really important one just to give a bit of background. Now we identified that 91% of cybersecurity attacks typically start with a phishing email. And this is something we want to try and help directly block. And the best way we identified to do that was by implementing DMARC on your own domain. So what actually is DMARC? It's an email security protocol set up back in 2012 by some of the big email providers like Yahoo, Google, and Microsoft. And the reason they set this up was at that point, there was no way of preventing exact domain impersonation. So what this will do is if you take your exact domain, picture that being used in a spoofing attack, potentially targeting your customers, people within your supply chain, or directly into your own company, once DMARC's fully set up, those attacks will become blocked. How does it work? So. All it is, is a TXT record that you add into your DNS records. Once it's set up, every time you send an email from your domain, you will receive back a DMARC report. And what we do at Redsif with our on-demand platform is translate those reports into nice, easy to understand, useful and valuable reporting that we'll have a look at in a minute. Also, what we do is we help you set up SPF and DKIM. Now, why are they important? Because they're the two protocols that actually make up DMARC itself. So for each one of the legitimate services that you use as a company, let's say Microsoft Office 365 is a prime example, we need to make sure that SPF and DKIM is correctly set up for it. That means your legitimate emails will pass DMARC validation and a receiving service can start to recognize that. And then any illegitimate unauthorized sending services will fail DMARC. Now, what do you do at this point once you've correctly configured SPF and DKIM? you have a look at these three policies. So there's three policies to DMARC, P equals none, quarantine and reject. Customers always start in, off in a policy of P none, which is just report mode only. At this stage, we're simply just gathering information, gathering reports to see what's going on on behalf of your domain, to see which services are currently sending from your domain and what their current SPF and DKIM configuration is. And in this stage, this is where we do the configuration, and also we start to identify potential spoofing services. Once everything's set up correctly, we then safely move you forwards to a policy of quarantine. In this status, any of the DMARC failing emails, i.e. unauthorized illegitimate emails, you're instructing the receiving service to push those emails into their spam folders. So it's kind of an in-between setting of protection. Now, the end goal that you wanna to get to is P-reject. We target our customers to get there in about six to eight weeks. Once you get to reject, again, any of those DMARC failing emails that by this point will be illegitimate spoof mails, you're instructing whoever receives that email to block the email entirely and send you back a report. So that's a little bit of a background to DMARC. Let's have a look at our demonstration. So this is what our solution looks like. We start off on our control panel, which is where you would manage your domains from. I've got a couple of fake demo domains that have been uploaded onto here. And what you would do to start off with is just simply add your own company's domain into this bit here. Once you've done this and you've hit submit, we then give you an instruction to follow, which is to configure this unique DMARC record into your DNS record. This takes all of about five minutes if you've got control of that. And just to note, you'll start off in that policy of P equals none. And this is the new DMARC record you'll have which points to our on DMARC service. So that's where the reports are getting forwarded to. Now, what we do is crunch them into a nice and easy to understand format, which then looks like this. So we've got four high level reports at the top, compliance receivers, locations, and delivery. And the first one we'll look at is the compliance report. This shows you the number of emails being sent from your domain a day and how many of those are passing or failing DMARC validation. So to begin with, when you're on a policy of P none, the red here shows you how many emails are failing, but not yet being actively blocked. So this could be a combination of legitimate misconfigured services, 
as well as potential spoofing services too. Now, as you start to progress forwards and then move into that policy of quarantine once everything's set up correctly, the yellow here highlights how many emails you're actively quarantining into the recipient's spam folder. And then finally on the end here, once you reach a policy of P reject, this red crisscross color shows you how many emails you're actively blocking per day. Now, once you get to that reject stage, that's when your domain becomes protected, your brand reputation becomes protected, and you can show people within the organization how many spoof mails you're blocking per day. Let's move to the receivers report now. So this shows you what email receiving services your recipients are using. We give you a top five list here, and you can download the full list from this button. We then have the locations report, which is pretty eye-opening. It shows you where around the world your domain is being used. Red dots indicating DMARC failures again. So these could you know, be, as we said earlier, the sources of malicious threats, or they could be misconfigured legit services. Now, once you get to a policy of reject, the great thing with DMARC is because it's a public facing protocol, anyone can check your domain. So if a potential hacker or spoofer were to see you were in that reject policy, they're less likely to bother impersonating your domain. And therefore you'll tend to see a decline in the volume of red dots over time. So it's again, a really nice one to report back to others in your organization to show them the benefit. And finally, we have our delivery report. And this basically comes on to one of the big benefits of DMARC, which is once it's fully set up, you improve your email authentication and more emails will start landing in receivers inboxes as opposed to spam folders. This then shows you how your emails are received on the recipient's end, giving us idea of how they then land in their inboxes. Now I wanna push on to our senders report. This is the most key report we supply and it's the most in-depth one where you'll likely spend the vast majority of your time. So what is it showing you? It shows you all the different sending services that we've detected to be sending on behalf of your domain, what type of service they are, the number of emails sent, their reputational score. So by that, you know, we can start to detect spoofing services straight away, which have a poor reputational score. And most importantly, on the end here, you can start to get an idea of what your current SPF and DCOM configuration is for each one of these services. It's worth noting that without this, you would currently be having no idea what the current setup could be for a service that you use. It might actually be failing SPF and DCOM without you knowing. Now, if we take an example here of a service that you might be using, like MailChimp for marketing, and we see that there's actually some DMARC failures, we can click into this service see the number of IPs that it's being that are sending on behalf of it. We can see the locations and the other high level reports we looked at earlier. But most importantly, you can come down here and actually see the failure breakdown. Why are these services failing in regard to SPF and DKIM? And our support engineers will come into here and help you get everything correctly set up. So it's a massively useful piece of tooling this. You can identify issues and our team can help fix them with you. Now there's a few bits left that I wanna show. The next part is what you do next. You can start marking which of these services you deem to be legitimate. So let's take Mimecast and MailChimp as the, for our example. We mark them as assets up here, i.e. services you're using. They'll be added to your email sources tab, which is where you then manage your legitimate services. And we have a really nice laid out four part wheel here, which once you get them to fully green, means you're safely to move forwards to a policy of quarantine or reject. So what do they actually mean? Top left and top right shows you whether or not SPF and DKIM is correctly set up within your DNS records. And underneath there shows you if traffic is passing, i.e. emails are passing correctly to confirm that they're fully set up. So once these wheels turn fully green, that is when you are then confident to move forward to that reject status. You can also store your correct SPF parts and DCOM selectors in this page, helps with the management of your DMARC SPF and DCOM. Now, if we do detect any failing traffic, we actually automate an instruction, which is how to correctly set up these services. So let's take MailChimp. If we spot there's failing traffic, you can click on these setup instructions. This will load this page, which takes you to our knowledge base, which has over 650 articles in it. And you as an end user can start to figure out how to correctly set up DKIM and SPF for a service like MailChimp. 
massively useful resource to have. And we've also integrated a live chat feature too. Now, let's push on to the next key feature, which is our dynamic DMARC page. Now, the first part we have is dynamic SPF. And we created this because a key issue around DMARC was the SPF protocol. It's limited to 10 lookups. And by that, I mean each sending service you use, you need to add an SPF include for it. Each include counts as a number of lookups. If you add too many, you exceed 10. That breaks your SPF record and can cause more emails to land in spam folders. What does dynamic SPF do? It allows you to manage all of your SPF of a single smart include here. You can then lift all of your old includes, A records, MX records, or any IP ranges that can then be managed straight off this one page. So you're managing it all off a single plane of glass. And in the long run, it will really simplify your SPF management and you'll never have to worry about that 10 lookup limitation. Massively beneficial feature that. And then we have our dynamic DMARC. So one of the issues we saw with our customers is that they're constantly having to log in and out of their DNS records, slows down the whole configuration process. With this, we've created a name server that you can add into your DNS which then means any DMARC changes you wanna make can be reflected from our solution. Again, you're managing it all off one pane of glass. And the same goes for Deacon, where you can host a single key from there with a name server and any selectors you need to manage can be done from this page. Fantastic feature that streams line your, your whole configuration process. And we've added an, an alerting feature in case anything's incorrectly added in, which you would not get from your DNS records. Now, the final key feature I want to show is investigate, which is a very cool feature. And the reason for us creating this is that we identified a problem with DMARC a couple of years ago. It takes 24 hours to receive the reports. Now, that's a limitation of the DMARC protocol and not a limitation of our solution. And what this does is it allows you to send a test email from a service like Office 365 into this unique email address. We then analyze that email and within about five to 10 seconds, we send you back a report, which is nicely presented like this. So let's have a look at an example. We show you these nice cards, which give you all the detail around your current DMARC configuration, SPF configuration for that service. Also your DCOM configuration. The idea with this is you can make a change in your DNS records and then check it instantly using this tool as opposed to waiting a day. We surface information around your TLS records, return path records, any URLs found within your email, threat intelligence, if you're using potentially poor IPs that could have been pushed to a blacklist that will affect deliverability. Again, we can identify that for you off this tool. And finally, you can get an idea of your BIMI certification. The requirement of BIMI is to have DMARC fully set up. It's a new initiative, which basically allows you to add your logos into your emails before a, before a target prospect would click on it. A requirement of that is to have DMARC configured to a policy of reject, and we can help you guys apply for a BIMI license. It's gonna be really big and really will help with marketing teams and brand awareness for companies. Now, those are the key features I wanna show you. There's other parts we can look at, but I would urge you to you know, book an actual demonstration with us so we can go through all of this in detail. The other great thing we offer is a free two week trial where you can actually start to get your own data coming into here. So it's things like the actual senders report, you'll be able to see in that time period what services we've detected that you're using and what their current setup status is. That's everything from me. I hope you found that useful and please feel free to reach out if you have any questions.